Uh, I'm going to start talking to you guys today about how we're going to try to do this kind of relief sculpture technique. Now again, like I said, remember that this is kind of a trial run on this project. Um, it's also using rather simplistic materials, right? We're using basically just these big stacks of cardboard, which I do have quite a lot of them because I hoard things. Um, mm -hmm. Again, remember, beginning of the year, dead covered full of cats. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, so I've got a stack of cardboard, I've got plenty to go through, um, so you don't have to ration yourself, but obviously, you know, use it uh, properly, right? If you have a huge clump of, uh, you know, cardboard, um, don't just cut your picture out of the middle and basically waste the entire piece, like kind of, you know, start around the edges and utilize all parts of the buffalo. Um, so, that's just kind of common sense, though. Uh, so I'm going to teach you uh, kind of two different techniques and then a new way of thinking uh, as far as using these layers. Now again, if you want to get more involved, if you like the idea of kind of relief sculpture, um, this is a very, very bare bones way of tackling this same concept. But if you like this concept, you can really get involved into like relief carving, relief sculpture, maybe even like printmaking using like block prints and stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff out there that involves kind of cutting and removing material to give you a new form. Um, eventually building up to actual sculpture itself in the three dimensional sense which if you go through art two and all the way through art three and you don't mind dealing with me for that many years, um, we eventually do like full scale uh, sculpture and stuff. So it's kind of fun. Um, but suffice to say, let's, uh, let's kick it here. So like I said, I'm gonna teach you guys a couple very, very short techniques here. So I went out and I printed up a bird. Yeah, bird, bird. look at him there. All right, so printed up a picture of a big bird. Um, now, now. Let's be honest, right? This is the, not the most three-dimensional of pieces, right? Hopefully the pictures you guys found were really, really 3D, right? They have a good sense of depth, right? We know that because things are overlapping, there's some cast shadows, there's a whole lot of cool stuff going on when you show actual depth. This bird is, well, it's kind of flat. Uh, the reason I wanted to grab a picture that wasn't super 3D was that maybe your picture isn't necessarily super 3D, right? Maybe you found a cool picture, but you're not super thrilled with it. So I'm going to start with something that would be theoretically more difficult to break down space. Um, and that way, if you have a picture that's super 3D, then obviously uh, it'll be a lot easier on you, right? So that's kind of the concept. Anyway, so there's a couple different ways that we can do this. Um, part one, if you want this uh, picture here, my bird, if you want this picture and you want it a lot bigger than what you've actually printed it, then obviously you're going to need to redraw this creature. To be perfectly fair, that shouldn't be too difficult. You guys know how to block things in. And we're not looking for super detail because, again, we're using cardboard. Your level of detail is very low for this project, right? You are not doing super detail, I assure you. Um, but, again, we know how to block things in so I could sit here and, oh, yeah, there's the... There's the head a little bit, da -da -dee, and then the body kind of, oh, there's this breast, ha <laughs> breast. And then, uh, let's see, this comes down, and there's some feet. Okay, so you get the general idea, right? I could sit down and actually, like, hammer out and, and draw this bird any size that I want to. But assuming that I want to stick directly to this picture, um, what I can do, what I can do is, um, oh, my God. No, what, I, <laughs> what I can do is um, I can do two different things, right? Part one is one that you guys have done all the time because you have math tests and you cheat. Um, so you could just literally trace, right? Uh, you guys can't see it really all that well in this projection right now, but I assure you I can see the outline of the bird so I could just kind of start, you know, kind of tracing him along and kind of figuring out where everything goes, a little eyeball and a little beak, all that jazz, right? You are more than welcome to sit and actually like trace out this bird. Um, for the sake of this project, of course. Um, but I'm going to show you an even easier way because that's what I want you guys to do. I'm not here to give you a lot of excess work. I want you guys to have a really easy time doing this project. So I'm going to show you a technique. This is called a, uh, a carbon transfer. Um, back way in the day before like photocopy machines and stuff, they had this stuff called carbon paper. It's still technically around, although now it's like all hipstery and hard to find. Um, but it literally is just a you know eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, but the sheet is made up of basically uh, carbon filament, uh, like they ground up some uh, uh, pencil lead, although this isn't lead, this is graphite. Um, they grind this stuff up, they print it into a sheet, and then I put it in between my papers, right? Now, if you guys have ever filled out like some fancy government document, sometimes they have like the, the three different layers and you push really hard through it, it'll like push through the different layers of paper. It's the exact same concept, right? But in this case, we don't have any. It's expensive and I can't afford it. So we're gonna make it ourselves. Now, technically you can do this technique with anything that's kind of smudgy, 
Uh, the way to think about it is basically if you've ever been drawing a whole lot, which you guys all have, and sometimes as you're drawing you get like that weird kind of black chalky mark on your hand from like the pencil or maybe from like charcoal, whenever we did charcoal. It's all the same, right? You get that smudge. All we're doing is we're utilizing that smudge to our advantage. That's all we're doing. So here's the deal. I've got my bird. Now, I am not worried about transferring all of this super little tiny detail here. That I can freehand in later on. What I'm worried about is like basic proportions. How big is this uh, bird? Do I want this log in here? How big are his feet? Where are they placed at, right? So we're talking basic kind of outline -y stuff, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm using one of these weird uh, uh, carpentry pencils. Doesn't really matter what kind of pencil you use. Uh, but I'm gonna go through and I can kind of hold this to the light and kind of see about where my bird is. So he's somewhere in here-ish. Now, what I'm going to do, literally just like a stamp, line it up wherever I want it to be. Now, again, you're going to do this, obviously, on your, uh, on your cardboard as well. Uh, we're going to be using this uh, sheet here. Now, before I go to transfer this, before I go to transfer this, what I want you guys to think about is basically, again, this concept of layers. So, you're also going to want to think about um, utilizing layers, right? So, again, the concept of this thing being kind of a relief. We ought to know what's coming really close to us and what's really going away. So, again, you can have a whole bunch of different layers. I'm going to use colored pencil here. You obviously don't have to. You know uh, what your layers are. Um, but, again, I'm going to go kind of basic with this. So, I'm just going to grab some basic y uh, colors here. I'm only going to do three because, again, that's what I said your minimum had to be. Okay. And I'm going to literally think to myself, okay, what do I want popping out? What do I want going back? All that kind of stuff. So obviously there's just kind of an overall piece for my background. I'm going to do that. Um, you don't necessarily have to if you don't want to, um, but we'll just call that kind of layer one, right? So we'll say the background is, you know, kind of one, right? Good enough. Um, now I'm going to think about, okay, what's layer two? Okay, well, layer two is going to be kind of this stump, right? We want the stump the stump Okay. Um, let's see, what else? Maybe his feet are on layer two as well. So I just kind of want to tell myself, you know, this is all, and again, I'm not being careful. I'm just kind of throwing it down. So we'll say the orange is all two, okay? Um, now I'm going to say like the bird's body maybe. The bird's body I'm going to say is, you know, kind of that second or third layer depending on how you see it. And again, you can add a whole lot more. You know as well as I do there's a lot more depth in this bird's, uh, uh, you know, overall kind of torso than just three layers. So we'll say the pale blue is layer three. And then finally, I'm gonna do a fourth layer. I'm actually gonna do his wing right here. I think that'd be cool if that was kind of popping out. So we'll do like his wing coming down like so. We'll say that the green is layer four. Um, that looks pretty good, I think. I could probably do some more layers in his head if I wanted to, but again, just a demo, so we're going really short and sweet with it. So again, I've kind of mapped out ahead of time what I'm actually transferring, and that's what I'm going to transfer onto my um, onto my cardboard. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to car or transfer, excuse me, directly onto some white paper so that you can see what happens. Now, as I go to transfer, this time I want to take my time. This time I want to make sure that I get nice, clean, crisp uh, outlines with it. So. I'm going to kind of push down. Again, it doesn't have to be like, I don't have to grind through the paper or anything, but I'm definitely applying some force. I'm not, uh, not being gentle with it. Uh, enough that like if I rub my finger across it, I can feel like a little indentation that I'm making. <clears throat> and notice that for like, for example, the one I'm doing right now is kind of this blue layer. Anything that's encompassed by the blue layer, i.e. the green layer is kind of within it, uh, I'm going to include as well. Right, so kind of getting this outline. Now I can ignore the orange layer because I'm just doing the blue right now. Include that green layer. Like so. And that's pretty good. Now, if there's any fine detail as far as things you definitely don't want to forget about. I don't want to forget where his beak is or where like his eye is. That's important to me. Or maybe even just like the basic placement of the wing. So I'm going to kind of put a little shape right here just so I know where to put that piece after I cut it out. And I want to put a little bit of detail here for the eye. Again, I'm not being super precise, but enough that, you know, I know it goes there. 
He's got like a little cheek thing over here, so we'll throw that in. And again, do like his little beaky. Okay. Other than that, the rest of it, I mean, isn't really anything in particular. I can kind of throw some shading and stuff down uh, later on after I've cut them out and transferred them. So whenever I'm done, there he is. Totally pushed through the actual uh, uh, graphite and pushed onto my page. So at this point, I know all of this is going to have something on top of it, and I can start kind of cutting this shape out and painting on any detail that I want to. I will repeat this process on different pieces of cardboard uh, four times, right? One for the overall kind of background, one for the wood and the legs, one for the bird, and one for the wing. Um, when I'm all done, I'll cut those pieces out. Really, I could probably fit them all on one sheet of cardboard. Uh, but whenever I'm all done, I'll cut them out and uh, be good to go, right? Literally, that's the quickest, easiest way to go about this process. Um, so again, let's say I want to do trace out my wing as well real quick. So I go through. Again, kind of pushing through. And sometimes if it looks like it's a little bit faint, if you pull the page off of your cardboard and it just doesn't really look as bold as you want it, then add more graphite to that backside. The more ink, so to say, that you have on this stamp, the easier it's going to be. Throwing a little bit of detail here for the wings, not excessive or anything. Just enough so I know where some of these little feathers are. All right. And there's my wing piece transferred as well. Right? So at this point, I've already got two pieces down. It took me a whole five minutes. You know what I mean? I would do the same thing with the stump and the legs. Uh, the background I really don't need necessarily. Um, but you know, obviously, I want to get the sizing down so I can measure it with a ruler. Um, and that would be it. Those are my pieces. I can cut those out and start stack a lacking. Um, I'm not really worried about it today, but in the back of the classroom, we're going to have some hot glue set up. That's what we're going to use for our gluing purposes because it's going to stick very, very quickly um, and securely. Uh, any questions? He like said, pretty basic stuff. Do as many layers as you'd like to. Yes, miss? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's it. Cool? Good? Cool. That's it. Thanks, guys. Um, we kind of, I showed you a second ago just kind of talking about uh, the idea of doing a carbon transfer, the idea of kind of taking this picture and, and transferring it under your cardboard and then cutting it out. So what I've done here, basically, I've cut out kind of a simple background shape uh, and then kind of the pieces for my, uh, for my bird. Okay, so to kind of help you guys along to make it more visually uh, adept for you here, to make it help out here, um, what you want to think about, right? So I've got my background piece that I've cut out. Then the next layer, I've got, like I said, I have that picture of the bird. Um, that bird, if you remember, he's sitting on this little stoop, right, this little log. So I went through and I cut out his feet and kind of a base picture uh, for his body. Now this body is by no means precise. I'm not cutting out his beak. I'm not cutting out little individual feathers. This lump is literally just there as structural support. That's it, to help keep the other layers up, right? So he would go somewhere like that. Then I went through and I cut out just the body of the bird, right? Again, you can see I transferred some detail and stuff because this is the side that I'll actually paint on. And he'll go neatly on top of there, right? And then finally I cut out the last letter, which is um, his actually little wing here. And that goes like so. And that's it. That's it. That's all you're doing, right? So again, keep in mind as you're going along, Think about that structural support. It doesn't need to have the perfect outline, but you want to have something so that this thing can actually stand upright. Make sense? Yeah? Cool. Thanks, guys.